Greetings, Terrarians, Chaos here. For the past few weeks, I've talked about working on some behind the scenes projects, and today, to my shock, Relogic has entrusted me to reveal something I have been working very hard on. In this video, I will be giving you all the very first in-depth look at the upcoming golf mechanic, as well as one of the very first golf maps. I teamed up with fellow beta tester Darth Morph to work on this golf course, which we have named Putraria, and the world save will become available for download Loaded this Saturday when 1.4 releases. Featuring nine unique biome themed holes, this golf course is designed to offer a challenge to any golf enthusiasts in Terraria. Each of the holes offers something unique for your golfing enjoyment, but before I get to talking about those, let's start with the basics. The world spawn is inside of this comfy safe zone, which is full of equipment that you will need to get golfing. Additionally, the world is in journey mode, so you will be welcome to make it as easy or as challenging as you want it to be. If you're not exactly sure of what journey mode is and you're looking for more information, Chippy Gaming has the first sneak peek of the game mode over on his channel, and I highly recommend giving it a watch. For the purpose of this video, I will be using journey mode to freeze time and turn off monster spawns. The first thing that I want to point out within the area is this sign right here. This is the Putraria leaderboard. Right now, it only has scores recorded for Darth Morph and myself, as we were the ones that built and playtested this golf course. But when the update releases, I encourage all of you to try the golf course out and record scores of your own. Today, I will be giving you a lot of tips and tricks to help you get a nice low score. And that's right, in golf, low scores win. This golf shack will equip you with everything that you need to get started with golfing. It even has the golfer NPC who sells golf related items. His stock will change as you increase your golf level, which is to say that the more you golf, the higher your level will become. You don't necessarily need to interact with this golfer NPC during your playthrough of the map because we provide all of the starting materials for you, but we did decide to add him in just in case you wanted to purchase anything later on. You can improve your golf score by golfing, obviously, but I'm not going to go too much into detail about that today, but I will have a full in-depth guide on golfing and the golfer NPC next week after Journey's End has released. Golfing starts simply by placing a golf ball on the floor. There are two ways that you can do this. If you have a golf ball item in your inventory, you can use it to throw a golf ball onto the floor. This will allow you to place a golf ball anywhere, but it is not the most ideal way to start a round of golf. This is an item called a golf tee. When you place the item on the floor, you can right click on it, which will place the golf ball on top of the tee. A golf ball hit from that tee will travel much further than any golf ball hit from the ground, making it the ideal starting location. Just a side note, carrying a different colored golf ball item will change the color of your placed golf ball, whether the item is equipped in an accessory slot or just sitting in your inventory. So once you've placed a ball, obviously you will next need to hit it. That's where clubs come into play. There are only four types of golf clubs that you need to worry about in Terraria. The putter is the weakest of the clubs and will hit the golf ball the shortest distance. It is best used when you are really close to the golf hole and you need a gentle swing so you don't overshoot. The wedge is a short ranged club that will be very handy in getting your ball out of difficult situations such as sand. The iron is a medium ranged club, which can hit a ball vertically very well, but it isn't the best for horizontal distance. The driver is a club that excels in getting golf balls very long distances horizontally, but it lacks the vertical lift that the iron has. With a club selected, holding the left mouse button will charge a swing, creating a visual guideline that serves as an indicator on where your golf ball will travel. This does not show the full travel distance, and the harder that you hit the ball, the less the guideline will actually show. You can increase the power of your swing by moving your mouse further away from your character, and moving it closer will lower the power. This meter will indicate how much power is behind your swing. 
Once you release the mouse button, your character will swing the golf club. There is no way to cancel a charged swing, but if you decide you don't want to hit the golf ball, simply walk away from the ball before swinging the club. It won't hit the ball and it won't count against your score. When you do decide to hit the golf ball, however, your camera will move to follow the ball for the entire time that it is moving. Moving your character will snap the camera back to you, so you don't have to watch the ball travel if you don't want to. If you are uncertain of where exactly the ball landed, you can see an indicator for it on your map and minimap, and there will even be an arrow on your screen pointing towards the golf ball as long as you're holding a golf club in your hands. Sometimes, your golf ball will end up in a place that you can't reach or you won't be able to hit it back out of. That is where this item comes in handy. The golf whistle will return your ball to the last position it was in before you hit it, essentially allowing you to redo your shot. You will want to use this sparingly though, because every time you blow the whistle, you will receive a penalty to your score. Again, I'm not going to go too much into detail on the score today, I'll save that for a later video, but you do need to know that the lower the score, the better, and using this whistle will add to your score. So now you can hit a golf ball. Great, but what do you do with it? That's where the next item in the golfing mechanic comes into play. This is the golf cup. It is a small block that you can place on the floor that when a ball rolls over the top of it, it will fall into the cup and it completes a round of golf. This is literally the goal of the game. To help you spot the golf holes, we've placed pin flags on top of them though they are not mandatory for golfing. This golf course has a tutorial section which will show you all of the various different ways that golf balls can interact with blocks, but it is completely optional, so when you're ready to move on to the actual golf course, you can simply access the pylon network to move around the area. If you have no idea what a pylon in Terraria is, I will leave a link to the article that Relogic released last week detailing these amazing new teleportation items in the description below. So let's take a look at all of the various different holes that this golf course offers. Keep your eyes peeled for secrets because this map is absolutely littered with fun items for you to locate and if you're able to find every single hidden gem throughout your playthrough there will even be a bonus prize at the very end of the map. Hole 1 Pirate's Cove is located on the left ocean. The pylon will take you straight onto a sail ship where the round of golf will begin. To get started, place your golf ball on the tee. You don't necessarily need to right click on the golf tee to place a ball. Another way to place it is by simply charging a swing on your golf club while you're standing near a tee. This will place a ball automatically for you, allowing you to get straight into the action. The first thing that you will see in the water is a small raft. You can hit the ball to land on top of this, or you could try and shoot over it, but be warned that if your ball falls into the water, you will be unable to get it out without using your golf whistle. Once you've worked your way along the ocean, you will reach the beach. If you get stuck in the sand, don't worry, just switch to your wedge and you will have no trouble getting out. At the other end of the beach, there is a large skull-shaped stone blocking your path forward. Shooting a golf ball into the nose will open up the mouth, allowing you to proceed inside. Notice how the golf ball is slowed down by the cobwebs around the nose of the skull. Different plants and objects will interact with golf balls in different ways, including slowing them down drastically. And as you can see here, since golf balls are projectiles, they can actually activate teal pressure pads. From here, you work through the cave and get the ball into the cup, and then you can move on to hole 2. The second hole, called Doom Temple, is not only an Indiana Jones reference, but it is the jungle-themed hole. You have to start off with a tricky arched shot that will land your ball inside of the temple, which will drop down and open up a path for you. Once inside of the temple, you will find yourself with three options. Pick your path carefully though, as some hallways are more forgiving than others. A big tip when golfing in tight areas like this is that more power is not always better. Your golf ball will travel much further than the guidelines predict when you are at full swing, which means your golf ball can bounce in unpredictable directions. This can end up landing your golf ball in a trap such as honey. 
Honey is the most difficult material to get your golf ball out of. If your ball lands on top of honey blocks, you can use a wedge to get out, but you will need to use the whistle to get out of the liquid version of honey. On the other side of these hallways, you will locate the hole. Once your golf ball lands in the cup, several things will happen. Your golf score will be announced in the chat, fireworks will shoot out of the golf cup, and the passageway forward will open up. That's right, not only can golf balls trigger wiring through teal pressure pads, but they can also trigger it when your golf ball lands into a golf hole. Hole 3, Sacred Oasis, is found within the scorching hot desert biome. A large sandstone hill rests between you and the hole that is located within the oasis. Be careful how you proceed, because falling deep into the antlion den can be tricky to get back out of. Once you do, make your way past the tiny pyramid and until you find the oasis. As you can see here, the hole is sitting on top of a small island. Normally, dropping the ball into a large pool of water like this would require a golf whistle to get back out of, as even a wedge would not be able to get out of this water. But as you can see here, there are some very helpful conveyor belts which will carry your golf ball up out of the water and onto dry land. Conveyor belts are an amazing utility block for golf balls. Even though the balls are considered projectiles, they will interact with the conveyor in the way that you expect them to, and you can do some really interesting things with that, including something like a ball lift. Once you've landed your golf ball onto the island, this little tip will help you finish the round. I made the island out of sand so that you wouldn't have to worry about your ball rolling off of the island, but that means that even at this close range, you will not be able to use your putter. The wedge is going to be slightly overpowered here, and you'll have a hard time using it to get into the hole as well because of how effective it is in sand. In this instance, the driver or the iron will be your best bet, because they don't travel very far when hitting a ball from sand, so the tip here is that you should always experiment with different clubs to see what will work best with your current situation. The fourth hole, Festering Maw, gets a little eerie as you make your way into the Crimson Biome. Beware of the Crimson Thorns. They might cause a little bit of damage to you when you touch them, but that's not the big concern here. They will also slow your golf ball down when it passes through them. In fact, all tall grass, vines, thorns, and dye plants will slow golf balls down. Take that into consideration when planning your shots. Now, this hole is a wide, fairly open area, so you might be tempted to just grab your driver and hit it at full swing, but you should be careful when you take blind shots like this at full swing. They can pay off sometimes, but other times they might bounce you right back to the start or even send your ball completely out of bounds. It's up to you if you want to risk high power blind shots like this. The more you play a golf course, the easier it will be to make that decision. And at the other end of this crimson biome, you will see a large monster skull. What you need to do is get your golf ball past the teeth and into the mouth where you can find the golf hole waiting inside. Hole 5, Frostborn Tower brings the chill as you enter the snowy biome. Unlike the other holes that you have been traveling mostly horizontal in, this one will force you to think about climbing upwards. You will want to carefully take ball placement into consideration as a poorly aimed shot can send you back down the tower. Another hazard of this course is the ice block. Golf balls will roll much further on ice than they will on other blocks, so be sure it's not going to roll off the tower. If possible, I would recommend aiming for snow and slush. Snow won't slow your golf ball too much, but slush will act the same way that sand does, so you will need to use a wedge to get out of it. Once you've worked your way to the top of the tower, you will need to land your ball on top of a floating island. Take care with this shot, as even a little too much power can send your ball soaring straight over the island and all of the way back to the very beginning. Things get even spookier at Hole 6 Ebonrot Stockades. This is not only the corruption themed hole, but the further you travel into it, the darker it becomes as it also turns into the new graveyard mini biome. There is a hidden task within this hole beyond just golfing. I won't spoil too much about it, but keep your eyes open when you play the map and see if you could find the hidden quest. 
As with the Crimson Thorns, you will need to watch out for Corruption Thorns. They will slow your golf ball down, but those aren't the biggest golf hazard within this hole. You will see many pockets of mysterious fog scattered around. This fog is hiding a very sticky trap. Try to aim your golf ball between the fog patches, but don't forget that if your ball lands within one, you can use your wedge, which will be a huge help. Traps aren't the only thing that the fog is hiding away. You will actually not be able to see the golf hole itself, so try to navigate through the fog to victory. Once you've completed the hole, the passageway will open up and you will find yourself in... Actually, let's leave this hole a secret for you all. I don't want to spoil the surprise of hole 7, so let's jump straight into hole 8, Dungeon Descent. The beginning of this hole is inspired by the traditional miniature golf obstacles, where you have to make your way into a small structure which has opening and closing doors. In this case, it's a miniature dungeon. Timing is key here. Your first shot will be a blind one as you won't be able to see all of the dungeon doors from the tee. You can risk taking a powerful shot and hoping that all of the doors are open, but if they're not, you'll end up bouncing back to the start. If you do make it inside of the dungeon, you will not have to worry about your ball bouncing out even at full power. This is because of the way that golf balls interact with platforms. They can pass through platforms in the same way that players do, except that when they hit the solid side of a platform, they won't be able to pass back through. By creating a line or a wall of stairs, you can essentially make a one-way door for golf balls, which will allow you to walk through in both directions, but the golf balls can only travel in one direction. Once your golf ball enters the dungeon, it will drop down through a large game of Plinko. If luck is on your side, you could very well end up in a hole-in-one here. If not, you will end up in a small cave where you'll have to make your way up to the hole using other means. The final hole takes you all of the way down to the burning depths of the underworld. Welcome to Hole 9, Deep Abyss. Unless you're using journey mode to disable mob spawns, you should be ready for a fight here. If up to this point you found all of the hidden secret gems, you can turn them in here for a special reward. Tee off from the main platform to rocky spires that are surrounded by lava. Unlike the Oasis, these pools of liquid have no conveyor belts. If you drop your ball into the lava, you will only have two options available to you. Either you use your golf whistle, or you dive into the lava after your ball. Luckily, golf balls travel in lava quite a bit better than they do in water and honey, so you should be able to get it out if you're quick enough. Be sure to place your shots carefully though, as many of these platforms are quite small. Shorter shots will be easier to make, but they will take more swings which will drive up your score. Longer shots are riskier, as you might miss and fall into a pool of lava, but you will cover more ground quicker. It's up to you how you would like to take on this hole. Once you finally sink the ball into the cup, a small pool of lava beneath you will drain and you will be able to proceed to the celebration area, which I will leave a mystery for now, but I will show it when I do my playthrough of this golf course with my friends early next week. And that wraps up all that I'm allowed to show today. Once the update comes out, I will be giving a full tutorial on golf and the golfer NPC. Additionally, I will be releasing a lot of different videos, from informational videos on new blocks, new mechanics, to new building items, as well as some various build videos and tips, tricks, and tutorials for the builder in Journey's End. If you all enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see 1.4 builds and building tutorials. Thank you all very much for watching and a huge thank you to Relogic for giving me the opportunity to show off this golf mechanic so early. I can't wait to watch a bunch of you play through this golf course with your friends. I'll see you all in Journey's End. Catch you all later. Happy building.